We're good? Hey, we want to welcome you tonight. Well, we want to welcome you tonight and so glad that you've tuned in to our live stream for Christmas Eve. This is the first in 29 years of the history of Cornerstone that this place is not packed and it's because we have the 2022 blizzard and really it's lived up to all of the hype and all the expectation and so we've been moving snow all day long and still our parking lot is jam packed with snow but we want to welcome you tonight we're so glad that you're streaming with us and we know this that the presence of God is going to fill your homes because he's faithful, and when we call, he comes. And so we're going to do that right now. Would you just join me in prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we come to celebrate your arrival. You broke into our world and gave us life. And so we come to worship you tonight and to give you glory and praise. And so we're going to worship you because you're worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And we thank you that you promised us. Those angels promised peace and joy and hope. And so we, God, will experience the remnant of that promise tonight. And so we bless you and praise you, Jesus. I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A couple came to Bethlehem expecting child. They searched the end to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born, oh hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find him in a manger bed. Emmanuel and Savior, hallelujah, hallelujah. shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you. And to the place at which you were, their frankincense and gold and myrrh they gave to you. Hallelujah. And 
know you came to rescue me This baby boy would grow to be a man And one day die for me and you my sins would drive the nails in you That rugged cross was my cross too Still every breath you drew was hallelujah Oh, hallelujah Oh, hallelujah 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 Hallelujah
Christmas is about traditions. It's really about more than that, though. It's about things that really matter. And uh, so what we started years ago was our church decided that we were going to help people at Christmas. And this year has been no exception that we have just been pouring out the goodness of God into people's lives. And so we started a tradition that first in 1994 on Christmas Eve. We helped a family that had a car accident that day. And so we started to set aside our Christmas Eve service and the monies that were given there to go to a need for someone. Well, this year we chose to have it to go to the Mission Bible Training Center near Iron River. And it's an incredible place with some amazing friends of ours that minister to people that are dealing with drug addiction and alcohol addiction for the most part. And so we have teamed up with them over the years. And this year, yesterday, um, I went over there with uh, $2,500 in cash and blessed them. And uh, I wanted you to know that because we believe this, that what Christ has done is so incredible that we want to pass on his love and it shows up in generosity. And so that's what our church has been doing is just continuing to bless others in ways that we know God's called us to and God's equipped us to and God's blessed us to. And we want to thank you also because you have so partnered with us throughout this whole year and have blessed this ministry financially so that we can do what God's called us to do. We did uh, gifts for 13 children. Their parents were, uh, for the most part, incarcerated. And uh, we wanted to bless them in our area. So we are so thankful for that. That's one of those traditions. Another tradition we have is to tell the greatest story. It's, um, the greatest of story is defined as a story of the birth of Christ. Um, my daughter Rachel and her husband were able to come a couple days early to beat the storm. And so for the last two nights, my granddaughter Evelyn has asked me to tell her a story. Isn't it something how stories have the ability to capture our attention and to help us to focus. This is the greatest story that's ever been told. It's the story of the plan of God to redeem all mankind. And so Peter Leslie's gonna come and read from Luke chapter two and he's gonna share the Christmas story. where uh, if you don't know me, Pastor Todd was kind enough and generous enough when I first met him. Uh, probably the second day that I met him, he uh, invited me to stay at the Hope House um, instead of sleeping in a tent across the street at Alpine Campground, which obviously for anyone who's lived in the UP or this area before knows uh, sleeping in a tent during the wintertime is not a good idea. Um, the generosity and um, just genuine love that Pastor Todd and his congregation has showed to me has been another reminder for me uh, what an amazing blessing Jesus is. Um, for about 50 years, Jesus let me do what I wanted to do with my life, and that was not going in the right direction. So this will be the first Christmas in probably 30 years where Christ is a part of my Christmas. And I think that it's appropriate <coughs> excuse me, that Pastor Todd has asked me to read um, the Christmas story. In those days, a decree, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the, in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news for great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, 
who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the, and the baby laying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as had been told to them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Thanks so much, Peter. I wanted to just share a couple thoughts tonight. A few weeks ago, something came to me that I've never thought about before. And it was about a promise of Christ. But it was more than that. It was about the plan of God since the beginning. I started to study about the Ark of the Covenant. And I was just astonished with the similarities between the Ark of the Covenant and Christ. The Ark, an Ark is defined as a place of, it's a refuge. It's a place of safety in a storm. I was thinking about that earlier today when the winds were just howling and the snow was just building up. I looked out our living room window and half of the window was covered with a drift. And I was thinking about how difficult it would be to be out in this weather. Like Peter said about being in a tent. An ark is a place that's a refuge in the midst of a storm. And the covenant, the ark of the covenant... A covenant is really a, an agreement. It's a binding agreement between two parties. And so the Ark of the Covenant came about about a year after the children of Israel were set free from Egypt and slavery. And God instructed Moses to build this ark. And what he built is this ark was built and it was just a small wooden box that was made of acacia wood, a special wood, and then it was overlaid in gold, and then there were two angels that sit on top of it, and these two angels were looking toward one another with their wings spread, and that's defined as the mercy seat, and it was something that went with them everywhere they went, and so for 40 years, as they wandered through the wilderness, four priests would carry this ark and the ark had on each corner a, a gold, a round a thing that you could put a uh, pole through and so they would carry it on their shoulders. Inside the ark was the law of God, the Ten Commandments and then also was the rod of Aaron and then there was a pot for the manna it really symbolized this, the precepts of God, the will of God, the law of God. It also represented the plan of God and his promise that he was going to provide and he was going to protect with the, the rod and with the manna. And so they carried this small box, the Ark of the Covenant, a place that was their safety, a place that was their binding agreement with God that he was going to provide for them, protect them, and they were going to follow him. And so the covenant was established with them. You remember the story where Joshua was ready to go into the Jordan and they were ready to go out of the Red Sea or out of the wilderness and, and the priest went to the edge of the Jordan and then what happened is their, their feet, as soon as it touched the ground or the water in the Jordan, what happened is the water stopped up and all the people passed through 
the Jordan on dry ground. It was something that was miraculous. But what they begin to do is they begin to take it for granted. And so they would take this with them into battle. And even though they went against the law of God, the will of God, the precepts of God, and were not depending upon him for his provision, but they wanted his protection. Think of that. And so the ark was taken from them by the Philistines. And then David decided that he was going to go back and he was going to take the ark and bring it back into Jerusalem where it was rightfully supposed to be. And so they were transporting the ark, but they were doing it in the way that was not the will of God or not the way that God had laid out for them. They were not transporting it on rods by priests, but they'd put it on a cart and the oxen were pulling this cart. And what happened was the oxen began to stumble and the ark looked like it was going to fall off this cart and a man stuck out his hand to, t- to, to just steady this box or this covenant, the ark of the covenant, And what happened is he was struck dead because they were doing things not God's way or in God's will. And so what David did is is the scriptures say in 1 Chronicles that he became very fearful. And so he left it there. And there was a man by the name of Obed-Edom. And I wanted to read you a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, because this is what happened to this man. And the ark of God remained with the household of Obed-Edom for three months. And the Lord blessed his household for Obed, and all Obed-Edom had was blessed. And David began to hear about that, and David said, I want to go get the ark. You see, God made a covenant with them. He made a covenant with Moses. He made a covenant with Joshua. He made a covenant again and again. You can see this over and over that he said, this is my will, this is my plan. And then he made a covenant with David that he wanted. I was running to read a scripture. It says this. In Isaiah chapter nine, it says, for unto us a child is born and a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and he shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness forevermore. That's a covenant God made with David. And it was a covenant that was made not only with David, but with us. That he said, this is what I'm going to do. Unto you is going to be born a child. You think about that. And then think about Jesus, born in a manger. Think of just a small wooden box. But it was a covenant, a covenant that God had promised. And what did he say earlier in chapter 7 of Isaiah? He said, he is going to be Emmanuel, God with us. So no longer was the presence of God going to reside in a box Because the box or the Ark of the Covenant was put in the Holy of Holies. And only one time a year could a priest, the high priest, could make his way into the Holy of Holies and be in the manifest presence of God. But think of this, that God became flesh, and what does it say in John? That he dwelt among us, and that we would behold the glory of God the only son of the living God, and that we could have relationship with him not once a year for one person, but for every one of us, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in our time of need. I was thinking about how incredible a promise this is. And think of this. David was a shepherd, and who did the angels go to? They went to a shepherd. They went to some shepherds that were outside of Bethlehem and they were just watching their sheep. And then like Peter read, all of a sudden the glory of God came. The manifest presence of God showed up. It was the power of God. And he wasn't relegated to a gold overlaid box 
but his glory was everywhere. And think of this. You know, nobody knows where the Ark of the Covenant is now. People speculate that it's maybe in some caves in Ethiopia. Others say it's in other parts of the Middle East. Some say it's been moved into um, Scotland. There's all this speculation. But you know what? It really doesn't matter where that box is, the Ark of the Covenant. It matters where Jesus is. And so Jesus, who became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and that we can experience him, and we can experience all the fullness that he's promised. And so what does he do for each one of us? He becomes a refuge, doesn't he? He becomes a place of safety, a place of peace. He makes some promises to us. And so no matter where you're at or what you're facing, it doesn't eliminate you or exclude you from the promise that God has for you. That he says, if you will open your life to him, if we will embrace him, we will find life that's worth living. We will find that he is our provider. That when we follow him, he sets things in order in our lives. That he's promised that he'll protect us and he'll provide for us. And even when we go through the storms, that he's going to be a constant presence with us. This has probably been one of the most difficult weeks of my ministry. On Thursday, we had a funeral for a little boy that was three years old. Suddenly died. I was there with his family. And at the end of that funeral service, we started to sing this song, The Blessing. And so we were supposed to have everyone about halfway through the song, get up and leave. But no one got up to leave because the presence of God is a wonderful thing and no one wants to leave the presence of God. And so I stood up from where I was seated and I went to stand beside Nick and Sarah, this wonderful mom and dad. And then the next thing I noted is a song was playing the blessing from generation and the Lord will bless you and keep you and on your children, and your children's children. And then I noticed that the whole, there were so many people that were surrounding this couple and their family. In the midst of great sorrow and grief, we sense the wonderful presence of Christ because he shows up. He showed up to a world that wasn't really expecting him and didn't make a place for him. But to all who invite him, he'll come and make his home with us. And so it gives me great hope and it gives me great courage when I see a world that is seemingly filled with problems. But I'm reminded of what Jesus said. He said, be of good cheer, I've overcome this world. And so I have to keep my hope fixed on him. And so he reminds me that he's the promise that he reminds me that he is the safe refuge and that we can go to him because he keeps his promises. And so tonight, Denise is gonna come and she started, um, she sang, taught us this song a couple weeks ago and it's just been a song that I've been just going over in my mind again and again. And here's what I'd ask you to do today. Maybe you've been going through a lot of difficult things or maybe this Christmas has been just not, what you thought it was gonna be. But today I'm praying that God's presence would show up right where you're at and that you would experience and know the manifest presence of God and that he would come and he would make himself known to you. And so I'd like to pray for you and even as Denise sings, if you just simply just sit in quietness and let God speak to you tonight. Let God come close to you. Let him remind you of the covenant he made with you that he's never going to leave you and he's never going to forsake you. And when you call upon him, he'll come and he'll show up and he'll walk with you through some storms and he'll buffer some of them winds that you're facing today. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you're here. I thank you that you're speaking to people right now. I thank you that Jesus, you are so real. Thank you that you promised us your Holy Spirit. 
You wouldn't leave us as an orphan, but you'd send us your Holy Spirit to dwell with on us. And so we bless you. Pray for people tonight that they just need to experience hope, that you'd fill their hearts and their minds with hope. Pray for those that are grieving, and I know the grief is so intense. But God, I believe that you can even go deeper into that place where, God, they would experience and know your presence. I pray in the midst of all this that you would remind us that you're with us, that you always come, that you always show up, and so we bless you. Pray for blessings over families tonight, that you would bless families, that you would give them the thoughts you think toward them, the future and the hope that you have toward them, that you would surround them and protect them in the year to come that they would experience and know, God, God, your promises that you show up every morning. God, you walk with them every day. Thank you, Jesus. We put our hope in you tonight. Amen. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end. You never do. So I lift up my Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing high Just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you, Lord. So I lift up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have.
it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for my king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up my hands and praise you again and again, my Lord. No, that it's not you praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart. Thanks for joining us tonight. We want to wish you and your families a wonderful Merry Christmas. Thanks again. We are just indebted to you to have you a part of our families and a part of Cornerstone family. And we, want, we pray that 2023 will be just filled with the presence and the power of God in your lives. God bless you. Have a great night. sleep.